so let's begin. So what we're going to do is we are going to close the complete version that we've been looking at. And then we have the incomplete version of the project, which is what you'll get when you download the assets. So I'm going to open the main scene. And in the main scene, we just have a, just gonna frame selected by pushing F. In the scene view here, we can see we just have a canvas, which has a black background, an input field, which is where we're gonna enter our text, and then a display text object, which is going to just show all the text that's been entered and displayed by the game. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to start by creating our room script. Uh, so we're going to make a new folder called scripts. And within that, we're gonna create a new C-sharp script, which we're gonna call room. And we are going to double click it to open it in mono develop. And I'll make the font bigger so you can see. And so the first thing that we're gonna do, we can delete the start and update functions because we're not gonna use them. And the reason that we're not gonna use them is because room is going to be a scriptable object. So I am going to replace mono behavior with scriptable object. Room is going to inherit from scriptable object. So let's just give a quick uh, explanation about what scriptable objects are. If you're part of the regular live training audience, you will have seen this before, but I'm just gonna repeat it for the folks that are new. So scriptable objects are scripts that are like mono behaviors. So mono behaviors, if you're a beginner to scripting in Unity, are the scripts you've always been using, right? They are scripts which hook into the Unity API and accept callbacks like awake, start, and update. Scriptable objects are like mono behaviors, but they never get attached to game objects. They can either live in memory in the scene or they can be created as assets. And that's actually how we're gonna use them today. So when we create a scriptable object, we can either use it to just store data, which is what the rooms will do, as you saw in the example in the inspector, right? It's really just a collection of variables, strings, and other scriptable objects. Uh, but we can also have them execute code, and that's what the input actions that you saw, things like go, use, take, and so on, will, that's the way those will be created. So we're gonna use both approaches in this session. Uh, and then if you want a kind of an, a nice deep dive into them and some of their advantages and disadvantages, I recommend the Overthrowing the Mono Behavior Tyranny in a Glorious Scriptable Object Revolution by Richard Fine, who is one of my coworkers at Unity. And is a, a really good talk uh, from Unite LA, which is available on YouTube. So what we're gonna do in Room is we're gonna start by adding a string, a public string for the description of the room. And this is where we're gonna enter the description in the inspector. Now, because the description might be long, we're gonna add the text area attribute, and that's gonna allow it to display as a bigger text entry box in the inspector. Then we're gonna add a, another public string for the room name, right? And this is what we're gonna to use to check against when we're doing interactive behavior to see, for example, if we're in the right room or not for an item to be used. So for now, we just wanna start the game and display the information for this room but we're gonna to return to it later to add exits and interactable objects. Well, before we save, what we need to do is we need to add one more thing. We need to add the create asset menu attribute. So this is gonna allow us to create our asset instances of this scriptable object. And we're gonna pass in a menu name, which is gonna equal text adventure room. So we're gonna go into the create menu and now we're gonna be able to create under a text adventure sub menu, an asset called room. So let's save that, go back over to Unity and I'm gonna add in my scripts folder, a subfolder for scriptable objects. And in that I'm gonna create a folder for rooms. 
in the folder, I'm going to right click, create. Now you see I have my text adventure menu here in the create menu, and I'm going to go and choose room. I'm going to name this starting room. So in the starting room, I'm going to paste in my uh, description. And we're going to give it the room name of starting room. So now we have a little holder for our data about our room. So to display this, we're going to need two scripts, the game controller and also the room navigation script. So we're going to create the room navigation script first. So I'm going to select scripts, create C sharp script, and I'm going to call this one room navigation. Double click to open. And all we need in room navigation for now, I'm going to delete, start, and update. This is going to be a mono behavior, uh, but all we need for now is a public room called current room to record what room we are in. I'm going to save that. We'll add more to this as we go. But for now, we're going to save it, go back to Unity, select scripts, and create the game controller script. The game controller is going to manage all the different systems in our game, like the room navigation. We're going to have a text input script. Later on, we'll have an item script. And the game controller is going to be the kind of central controller for everything. So in the game controller, we are going to do the following. We are going to add a variable for it to connect to our room navigation script. And we're going to use the hide in inspector attribute. We want room navigation to be public so that we can talk to it from other scripts, but we don't want to see it in the inspector because we're going to set it up automatically in our awake function. So we're going to change start to awake. And then here, we're going to get a reference to room navigation, which is going to be attached to the same game object as the game controller. We're going to use get component room navigation. Okay. We're also going to want a function to display the room as text. So we're going to add a public function that returns void, which is going to be called display room text. And within it, we're going to create a new string variable, which is going to be called combined text. Now for now, it's just going to consist of one thing, but we're going to add a few other things to this as we implement them. So for now, it's just going to contain room navigation dot current room dot description. And then we're going to use the plus operator to add another thing onto this string. So we've got our description from our scriptable object. And then we're just going to add a new line character, which you write by typing backslash n, which is just like hitting return on the keyboard. So we're going to save this. Now, we're going to want to display a log of everything that's happened in the game, right? And we're going to call this our action log. And to do this, we're going to use a list. Now, a list is a type of data collection. So if you haven't encountered lists before, we're just going to talk about what they, what they are. So a list represents a strongly typed list of objects that can be accessed by index. It provides methods to search, sort, and manipulate lists. Lists do not need to have a size declared when they're created. And as new elements are added, the list gets longer. So this is useful when we don't know how many objects we're going to need to store. So for example, this is a log of all the actions in our game. We don't know how many actions there will be in our game, right? The player could run around in circles and, and run up the list of actions. And so we need to have a collection that can grow dynamically. And a list is a good choice for that. So when we create a list, the type of the list must be specified using angle brackets. And so for example, we can create a new list of transforms as you see on the screen. So we'll say it's a list, the type, is transform, the name is sum transforms, and then that's equal to a new list object of the type transform, which would be empty, right? So we're initializing the list and creating it at the same time. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna add a new list to our class. So we're gonna add a list of strings, which is gonna be called action log, and that's gonna be equal to a new 
list of strings. Now, we're gonna wanna add a function to add things to that list. So we're gonna add in a public function that returns void, which is gonna be called log string with return. It's gonna take a string parameter called string to add. So anytime we wanna add a string to the list, we're just gonna call this function and pass in the string. Then we're gonna call action log dot add, right? So this is a function of the list class that allows us to add things to the list and it'll just add them on at the end of the list. And so we're gonna call string to add and or we're gonna pass in string to add and then we're also gonna pass in another new line. So we're gonna add in a new string with a carriage return or a new line at the end of it. Now, we wanna call this once we're ready to display our room text, right? So here, we're gonna say, log string with return, and in this case, we're gonna pass in the combined text, right? Which right now is just a room description with the new line at the end. Now, in order to actually show this on the screen, we're gonna need a reference to our UI text object, which is already set up in the, in the scene, in Unity. So we're gonna add a public text, but notice text doesn't appear on our list because we haven't added the using Unity engine dot UI namespace. So now we have the text type as one of our variable options. So we're gonna create a public text variable called display text. And this is what's gonna show all of the text on the screen. So in above our display room text, we're gonna add a function to actually display the text. So this is gonna be a public function that returns void and it's gonna be called display logged text. So this is gonna display everything that's in our action log currently. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a string, string variable called log as text, because right now our log is a list, right? So it's a bunch of separate strings. What we wanna do is we wanna join them together. So we're gonna use string.join, and then we need to pass in a separator for each item in the list. We're gonna use a new line. And then we're gonna pass in our action log list, but we need to convert it to an array because string.join accepts an array uh, as its second argument. So we need to convert our list to an array, which we can do using the toArray function. And so basically we're taking our whole list of actions and turning them into one long string uh, with carriage returns, with new lines in it. Then we wanna display that. So now we're gonna say display text dot text. The text of our UI text in the scene is now gonna be equal to log as text. So the whole list turned into a string and displayed to the screen. Now all we need to do is add a start function to start this process. So we're gonna say first, display room text. We're gonna call the display room text function to get the description. And then we're going to display log text to take the text from our action log and put it on the screen. And now we can save, and I'm gonna do a control shift S to save all my classes just in case I forgot. And then we're gonna go back over to Unity and now we can create a empty game object, which we're gonna call game controller. And we can attach our game controller script. And you see it has a field for display text. That's gonna be the display text game object, which is just a UI text object. See right now it's just holding this uh, placeholder lorem ipsum text, right? We're gonna drag that into the field on the game controller. And then we're gonna add in our room navigation component and drag in our starting room as the current room. So now when we play our scene and test, we will see that our placeholder text is replaced with the description of our first room. So now we can display the description of our room from inside our scriptable object uh, and we're off to a good start. The next thing that we're gonna do is add some exits to our room. Um, before we go any further, let's just pause and I'll take some questions 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying this is for more advanced programmers, but I do hope that you have the basics of C Sharp. This is kind of like, you know the very basics. Maybe you've done our rollerball tutorial or you've done the space shooter tutorial, and now you're ready to take on a few more concepts like working with some data, with lists and dictionaries, and a little bit of inheritance. And so kind of moving to level two of programming. R. Xanadu uh, mentioned, says, thinking about Fire, Firewatch and how they implemented a text-based adventure game, was wondering how to implement a TBA into another type of game. I know it's beyond the scope of the video. I just want you to know where to start looking. Well, honestly, if you want to do that, you can literally just use the code that I'm going to provide here today. Uh, and then all you need to do is just display it in a UI object in your game, right? Because this is just, we're just using a UI text to display it, and then you just need to make sure that you focus the input, and obviously it needs to be a game where they have a keyboard or some way to enter words, right? Um, you could also, I guess, do select with like a menu, but yeah, not not hard at all. Uh, just an int integration uh, situation. 